everyone. Welcome to Not Just Real Estate. I'm here with Lindsay Foster from Foster Living and myself, Rob Golfi with Remax, the Golfi team. And uh, we got some stuff that we're going to talk about today. We got some stats. We got some uh, issues with uh, somebody that uh, is going to receivership and owes the banks $144 million and who knows what else he owes uh, uh, on top of that. But I want to get into the into the, the stats. And it okay, so I brought up the stats. Hamilton, the Halton, uh, Brantford, and Niagara area. Now, like last year versus January of last year versus January of this year, um, it looks like things are, are coming along, um, except Hamilton, like when you add Hamilton Central East, Mountain, and West, um, it, it looks like it's down 3% year over year. Uh, 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 benchmark price. So January of 2023 in Hamilton, the benchmark price was 651900 And right now, January of 2024, it's 630500 down 3%. Now, it, it's, it's, hanging in there it's flatlining pretty well out there in in a lot of areas but but overall all the surrounding areas like Ancaster Dundas Flamborough's up uh Stony Creek water everything everywhere around uh, Hamilton Hamilton proper is up so it, it it's a good sign so things will catch up uh over there now Burlington uh, definitely a lot better. I mean, they're up 19%. They really took a, a beating January of last year versus January this year. So, but I'll, I'll tell you, like that was the time to buy in Burlington. Uh, the benchmark price has changed almost 150 thousand. It is, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. So everywhere it's up except Halton Hills. Halton Hills. There's a lot of high end properties, and and sometimes it uh, um, it. It, 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 it won't show that uh, because we want to know what the medium price, that's the benchmark price. Now, Brantford, uh, it, it's down 7%. Uh, I think it's just because of the affordability level and not many people are maybe going out there as much now. Maybe it's hard to tell. Not as much competition. Uh, they sold about the same amount of houses in January of last year as January of this year. Um, but we have Niagara. So in Niagara, we got uh, a lot of it is, is down, and I think it because it overinflated quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So now it's just a readjusting itself again. Um, so again, it's it, it's floating up and down between ten and fifty thousand dollars. It just depends on what month uh, that you're buying in. Uh, so you got to be very careful there. Um, Pelham Fawn Hill, uh, they're they're up uh, three percent year over year. Um, so the benchmark price there in uh, Fawn Hill Pelham is about seven hundred five thousand five hundred. Uh, Fort Erie, they're up. I can't believe it. Uh, 599. I think uh, to me, I think that's high for Fort Erie. I, I, you know, I feel, you know, sorry, people that live in Fort Erie. I just, that's how I feel. Uh, Grimsey's down. So they probably jumped too high and they had to readjust itself. Um, Niagara Falls, um, it's higher than St. Catharines. And I think it's just because a lot of people are exiting Toronto and going to Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a nice little community. I grew up there. I know, I know all about it. And, uh, so, and, it, and it's totally changed. Niagara and Lake, that one there is down 14% uh, year over year. But you can't, don't even look at Niagara and Lake numbers. It's terrible because like one month, it, you know, they sell a lot of uh, multi-million dollar homes and some months they don't. So it goes up and down like a yo-yo there. So I don't, don't look at those numbers. Polk Coburn, Wayne Fleet, they're down 5%. So their, their benchmark price now in January is uh, 480,000. St. Catharines at 585,000. They uh they uh they dropped just 1% from uh, uh January of 2023 versus January of this year. Well, look at the volume sales change in yeah. St. Catharines, 60% up yeah. Jan over Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Like people it, are moving. they're 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 jumping. So like, there's a lot of people going out there. Well, let me see. What about Niagara Falls? Niagara Falls it, it, it was the same. So more, 89%. So a lot of buyers, so a lot mm -hmm. of buyers and sellers out there. So Thorold, look at Thorold how it jumped. 21 sales, the same. Like, look at that. 39% up year over year in uh, benchmark price. Welland, uh, they're down 5%. Again, 
I, I categorize Welland and uh, Fort Erie kind of the same kind of markets. They're a little bit tough markets. Before COVID, they were tough markets, and I and and it may fall back into that category uh, down the road. It's hard to tell. Now West Lincoln. Now they don't do that many sales. There were 16 sales in West Lincoln uh, in January of this year, uh, and last year there was only 10. Um, so they're up 60% on sales and they're up 19% on average price. But sometimes West Lincoln's got some high end homes and, uh, it, uh, it, uh, you know, it, it offsets the, the, the numbers now Toronto, they're down 4% from, uh, January of last year versus January of this year and Tor Toronto, Toronto, you know, it'll recover real fast this year. Um, the only thing I, I still see that out there. The buyers are coming out, and I know they're tiptoeing and, and looking at it more. We, we've done a lot of open houses in the last uh, month, and uh, the um, I, I think you're going to see more and more buyers come out. And But the one thing, the sellers, it's funny how their brains work. They actually think uh, the first quarter of 2022 was just six months ago. <laughs> so they go, yeah, a house down the street, it just sold. For nine hundred thousand, and then yeah. I'm there going there. You know what? Probably seven fifty, maybe. You know that you should listen. What the house down the street just sold for nine hundred fifty or nine hundred thousand, and they time goes by so fast, and they're forgetting that. Do you do you like? Are well, you they, getting that sometimes? They forget it because it's a wow factor, right? Like, and yeah. and I've been embarrassed before. You know, you bring your package to your listing appointment, and someone mentions a neighbor, and you're going, "Oh shit, did I miss something?" But really, that neighbor sold three years ago, oh. and it's never something we would use for an appraisal. I really like these numbers you brought because it also talks about how people are moving and what they're looking for. Yeah. If you look at where some of your benchmark price increases are, Flamborough, um, and your where were we in Niagara? Thorold. It's like, why are these people buying and what are they buying? Flamborough to me is big, large property. That big country properties, uh, equestrian but centers. But then if you look at sort of the state of our economy right now, are those people downsizing from even larger farms or are they leveling up from suburban? It'd be interesting to dig a little uh, deeper. But. I, I think I think they're people that have money mm -hmm. and they're in the horse racing business and they want their horses close to the track. Sure. So the horse doesn't travel too much and so that it doesn't get jet lag while it's going from one end of the Ontario to the other. And you can't accomplish that in the benchmark of one one though, can you? In Flamborough, they, that's why it's a benchmark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I go benchmark or medium price because average price. Oh, it's misleading. It, it doesn't it, work. It, it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I don't like about our real estate board? Tell me. When they they tell it, they they announce it. The Hamilton Burlington board. The average sale price is eight hundred and fifty thousand. They're including Burlington numbers with that. Mm -hmm. Separate it. It's two different cities. Separate it and say Hamilton is six hundred and eighty thousand, and Burlington's nine eight hundred and fifty. 50,000 like separate don't put it all together like I I just I don't know why they do that and they send out the press release to uh the radio stations and the newspapers and and they say oh yeah the the average price on the Hamilton Burlington board is this much which is bullshit yeah and I don't I don't I don't, I don't do you agree with me on yeah, that but or? they're using our own skill set against us like every time I see a media report and I and if they say this is down by x is it price? Is it volume? What neighborhood is it in? Is it yeah. hyper specific? And and the truth is that we as salespeople use these numbers to our advantage every day. So it's a little bit of a flip script yeah. on us. Yeah. Um, but no, you're right. And it can become misleading. Yeah. And I never use average in we don't want to be average and average means nothing. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of these, you know, your benchmark is compared across only nine properties to take an average of nine properties. If one is a hovel and one is a man, that, that could totally offset the numbers. Absolutely. So I had a guy, they called the office and he goes, he's kind of confused in, on, on our numbers. And we said to him, look, these are, are the true numbers. Yes, these are benchmark medium prices. Uh, but if you want to go average price, it's not the real numbers because if there's a couple of high end homes sold in there, it's going to, it's going to make the numbers look higher than it really is. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I knew there was another, um, uh, real estate team out there, uh, that put out uh, a, a newsletter similar to, uh, what I was putting out just to let you know, they copied me anyway. <laughs> so I, you know, I just thought I'd throw that in there, but, uh, but 
whoever was doing the numbers has no clue. Mm -hmm. Like I even, we couldn't even figure out what, what he, so he obviously hired somebody to put the numbers in. I do them myself all the time. When we put our market watch in, I do them personally. I sit down with them uh, on the computer and I get them right from our real estate board. So this other company or real estate team, they said, Hey, Joe, go get me the numbers. And they have no clue what they're doing. And mail them out to thousands of people. Mail them out to people. thousands of people and confuse everybody. Oh. And, uh, and, it, and, it, and it's wrong. So they should actually smarten up and listen, do it yourself. I Like every single, one, every single uh, market watch newsletter I sent out, um, I've done the, I printed out. You do yourself. I, everyone. And then yeah. I have, I have my uh, graphic person insert them, but I printed them out myself. I, you know, all the time. Well, and I think you would agree. We would hope that that's like the minimum fucking duty of care that if you're going to mail yeah. the Rob Golfy quality database, uh, a market update uh, that it's been vetted. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, I listen, I want to make sure that the, the public and, and you're the same way when you're doing home evaluations and everything you're, you're doing it. Um, like I do like, I want to make sure the public is getting the right information. Mm -hmm. And we even define what benchmark price is yeah. in, in, in there. So when people are reading our newsletter, they know what the benchmark price means and everything else. But like, 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 I know some realtors, they have other people do their evaluations. And I, I think it's wrong because you learn the neighborhood even more when you're going through the souls and the actives and the expireds and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, and I'm, I don't like, I, I'm sure you do, do, do you do it yourself yeah. or do you have well, somebody to do it for you? Like what you just listed off is very interesting to you and I, cause we understand it. Yeah. But I think for like the average consumer, even this chart that you've presented could be really high level learning. Yeah. So if we're not going to put the onus on us as the professionals to know precise data, either on a high level scale for the entire GTA or in particular at a listing appointment at someone's house. Imagine, imagine I sent you with a pack of comps and said, go inside. You'd be scrambling. Yeah. And I you would, wouldn't I would trust know. my work. No, no, no way. And, and I, I think, you know, uh, I remember when, uh, um, uh, years ago, um, going to, I, uh, I, I was probably one of the first ones that used a uh, iPad to go to do really? my, my presentation way back. And, uh, cause I know guys had, you know, their binders with the plastic, they had the uh, plastic coated, uh, like, you know, you know how you could buy those plastic yeah. inserts. Um, I did the lot I had the, the iPad and, uh, I was going there, going through the, the presentation and we blew everybody out of the water. I think everybody does that now. Anyway, they, they pretty well do their presentation. Oh way. no, I'm uh, I'm not the tech girl. You won't catch me with an iPad. <laughs> I'd be slamming it on the table. So but you go, but, but you have, do you have, a, do, you, do you bring your computer with you? No, I do it oh. all. I do it. I, I bring a, a decent paper package and you got everything with you. E everything, everything. And most, and a lot of it's up here too. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you know, we've really made a business and one of the reason that our repeat and referral is so good. And I hope people would attest to this is that like we pride ourselves on being normal. Yeah. I don't, I don't, if you own a basic bungalow in central Hamilton and I come at you with the 12 month roll of, of GCI, you're, your brain's going to fall right yeah, out on the yeah, floor. So yeah. it's about what's manageable and also what's pertinent. Like yeah. if someone's looking to sell their house, they're not looking for Rob Golfie's impression of the last 12 months of real estate. No, they no. just want to know what's for sale, what's, what's sold, sold and what the fuck does that mean for me? Exactly. I need to know what I'm going to get and can, uh, and they want top dollar. Everybody wants top dollar. And you know this very well. Sometimes that's very easy. Yesterday I had to do a triplex for somebody yeah. in a neighborhood that only has single family homes. Um, in a space that is really impressive, but is full of vagrants. And so as you start to do, we call it like an appraisal perspective, yeah. plus minus, plus minus, mm -hmm. by the time you're done, you really need to sit and think, and, and this could take hours to review. Oh, yeah. And what do you do? Another one is, um, average price per square foot. If somebody brings that to me and if we're negotiating, I will literally just hang up my phone. What the oh, fuck I is know, average I price? Know, per I know. I you, know. You're not going to believe this. Talking about the, the triplex. So I was just at a house on the weekend and it was a fiveplex, legal fiveplex. And, and you can add a, a, a sixth unit in there. Uh, the, the, the city's good about this, but this guy had, he said he it's been empty for eight nine years. Mm. He's only had one tenant in there. He kept it empty. Ah, he goes. I didn't want to deal with tenants to this and that. And and my gut feeling is, I think this guy's old. I I think it's been empty more than ten years. I think you know how people say it was just two. It was just 
six she, months yeah, ago, sure, but really sure. it was five years ago. Like, you know, you know how people say, yeah, we just renovated our kitchen. But meanwhile, it was 20 years ago mm -hmm. in their mind. They think it just happened. But this guy, I'm telling you, I went through this house and needs a total renovation. Um, and, uh, but he's thinking his house is worth just like the other ones down the street. So I don't think we're going to get it. Cause we're going to tell him the, the, the real truth of yeah. what the value is. Some other agent's going to go in there and give him a high number and it's going to go in and try to beat him up on the price while he's got it listed and is going to frustrate the guy. He's going to upset the guy. Um, and, uh, and, but anyway, but yeah, but I, I this is a, this needs new windows, new flooring, new bathrooms, new kitchens. Um, great unit. Well, great he's unit. probably in a rush to do it because our city in Hamilton just reneged on and then re reintroduced over the course of less than three weeks that we will be having a vacant land tax. So oh, if this guy is considering he has five vacant units, then they might be. I, I think he's for, just getting old. I think yeah. he's getting it's time for him to un, he's, he's unloading, doesn't want the headaches. And, and, uh, and I said to him, I go, looks look, 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 you've got older windows here. No windows are fine. Meanwhile, it's got like a plastic around them. <laughs> so fine. how do you, how do you talk to a guy like that? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how do you deal with a guy that like, you know, the building needs new windows and, and he says the windows are fine. They don't need any, they, you don't need to change them. And meanwhile, he's got plastic on the inside. You know, you know, those plastic sure. that you cover, like, how do you, uh, like it's. Well, like, and that's one type of investor. The other kind that I've been seeing are, um, I call them my Excel spreadsheet guys, right? So we'll have investors come to me and they'll show me how they're cash flowing on their property. And it's bringing in X amount a month. And it's not taking into consideration that you're not prepared to sell it for the amount that your mortgage is, right? Like these numbers are irrelevant to the next guy down the line. And I'm trying to say to people like, if our investors aren't buying right now because the consumer mentality is not to collect properties under 6% interest rates and, and it's not where you're going to build your castle, right? Then having really interesting rent rolls is not uh, a marketing piece because there's no one to market to. Yeah. And, yeah. and what you need to put down on a 1.5 to $2 million multi-residential project isn't the cash on hand that these people have anyways. So, right, right. And try telling that to someone though that's making hand over fist money every month. That, that isn't that isn't mutually exclusive that's not going to be the yeah. case for the next guy the next guy at your place is going to have to buy some damn windows that, oh right? for sure for sure doesn't matter what your guy thinks so, so going going to the multi-residential so i i follow grant cardone a lot okay. right and he said he was saying on his on his feet and i and i i kind of believe this he says it's crazy to buy a single family home as an investment try to buy a 10 plex 20 plex even like whatever whatever you can because um, it, it will, I don't know, like he's saying that the amount of money to do it, like, I guess, you know, he's showing people how you can do it with no down payment. I guess, I don't know, whatever in the U S it's obviously a lot easier. Yeah. We have too many regulations here in Canada to get away with it, but there, there are ways of doing it. There's no doubt about it. There are ways of buying property with no money down. I just, I, I just bought a commercial one. Uh, it, it worked out well. Plus I got the renovations from the same company, BDC. It, it worked out well, but uh, Grant Cardone is saying, um, if you're going to invest and buy real estate, try to buy something with a multi-residential. Don't just buy a single family home. And that, you know what? I kind of agree with him on that. And, uh, I just gotta, I just gotta, you know, I'm, I'm looking at going to one of his seminars. I, I, I filled in a form, even also, uh, them coaching our team a little bit, but mm -hmm. the guy was trying to close on me. And I said, listen, <laughs> he was trying so hard. And, and, uh, my assistant was sitting behind me and, and I go, listen, uh, I go, I, I'm taking the information. I'm going to discuss it. I says, I, one week from now, I'm going to close on you. I said, and he's going, what do you mean? I said, listen, don't. And he's giving me every freaking line, like every closing line. And I'm just like, I, no matter what you say, buddy, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But be, be prepared on Monday. Because whatever number he threw at me, I'm not paying what he's... You're renegotiating. I'm going to renegotiate Good it. Good for you. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm just... And, and I think he knows that because I said, I'm going to close on you. Yes. And he's like, he just kind of smiled. And, 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 and But you know what? It was good, though. It was a good learning thing that what he was teaching. Like, I mean, he's well-trained. Sure. Very well-trained. 
I think so. the important thing is to recognize though, like an investment in real estate is a risk any way you cut it. So like yeah. whether you're buying 200 units or, or a duplex with a side door granny suite, mm -hmm. right? Like we're seeing a lot of people whose mortgages are coming due, who were likening themselves to being incredible investors. And I, I mean, I own three houses that I don't live in yeah. and one that I do. And lots of months after my tenants pay, I put more money on top or yeah, yeah. Your, the services that you need to provide and the plumbers and the bills start to oh, add yeah, up and yeah. you have to have cash flow to own properties absolutely or you need a good group of people that are all yeah. like-minded and yeah. aren't going to need that liquid in some time but yeah. on that note we have some news oh yeah look at this so so you sent me the city tv article yes i it, it, it's uh three landlords among the largest real estate holders in ontario owe 144 million under bankruptcy protection holy smokes and we we know this guy yep you know, you know him way better than Scott I do. knows him way better than either of yeah. us do. So, but, um, so what, what the hell, like this guy, like, 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 like if you like have, let's start on the you, overview, if like, you own property, and yeah, usually you have cash. Usually the tenants are paying and you pay, you, you pay your mortgage and, and taxes and insurance and whatever else. But what the hell is he doing with his money? Like going back to Grant Cardone's model, or I know Joe Mysek out of Toronto does this as well, but like the idea of the investor group is the way to get yourself out of buying two unit houses yeah, and into yeah. buying 200 unit like apartment multi, buildings. Very multi, multi-residential. And yeah. so my understanding from these articles is that uh, an agent that we know locally, uh, along with a construction company run by an XYTV television child star, combined with a third guy, convinced a lot of people that there were some opportunities in Canadian real estate markets to the tune of oh, well over a hundred million dollars in investments. Um, but if you read through the article, you're right. There's 144 million in outstanding loans coming due, but yeah. there's some other jarring numbers here. So their, their bankroll costs that they are not able to meet monthly are sitting at $350,000. Yes. Compounding. Yes monthly oh, and they're not paying that and things are just rolling they're not paying that the gentleman one of the three gentlemen in question and this is there i think there was eight or nine uh, different companies that they listed there that were in ownership including like happy gilmore productions and um like men who ride you, horses happy gilmore productions you're talking about that's an adam sandler yeah like but he, they, is he part of this no they just chose that as a corp name probably because they were like oh we need a 19th corporation oh my which God. is also like crazy that our government lets people do that yeah, but yeah yeah so so they've they've put together an investors group which at the surface great idea yeah. totally legal yeah, yeah. like-minded people pooling funds right and if we like go back to 2021 i think you and i also know a lot of investors that were going to windsor or london because they saw that there mm -hmm. was depreciated assets that they right. could grab um obviously like the landlord tenant rules in more rural communities might not be upheld the same way which is not an opportunity to take advantage of people, but I think especially in the case of the Sault Ste. Marie's and the Timmins, they did. But anyways, now they own all these buildings. It would stand to reason that they spent the hundreds of millions on down payments because it says they're liquid cash. So they're losing 350 a month. But, the, but the problem there is a, a lot of, a lot of these buildings are empty. They're empty and their cash reserves what, what through the, the corpse are at $100,000, Rob. They have $100,000. That that that's nothing in, in the amount of of uh, business. Who knows? Do you think they were do you think they were writing checks for themselves a lot? Probably. I think they went to Vegas a good couple yeah, of yeah, times for yeah. sure. I think oh. they quick wealth and they took advantage of that. But you know what? That. But the problem there is I I I've, I've got a couple of properties under renovations, mm -hmm. okay? Now they're vacant, but they're being renovated. So I'm paying a mortgage on both of these properties as we're doing the renovations. Sure. So the faster we get the renovations done, the faster I can fill these properties up and, and, make some money. And, and make some money. So they probably weren't in a rush to maybe fill these properties up. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm, I'm on these guys, like, come on guys, we got to roll. No, no wasting time. Like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get these uh, properties uh, finished so I can get tenants in there and fill them up. Yeah. So, I, I understand the, the cash flow situation plus with the interest rate increase that happened in the past 18 months, two years. Yep. I think, um, and I don't know, do you think the banks will just keep lending him just to stay afloat? Well, it sounds like they've already received something to the tune of $4 million in an emergency loan. Um, which, so the banks which is don't unfortunate because you and I are meeting with regular people every day whose yeah. mortgages are coming due who are yeah. not going to be able to stay in their homes. Yeah. And I mean, 
not to downplay anybody that's at a high investment level and is dabbling in this because there's definitely excellent opportunities, but it really comes down to the little guy. And the fact that this company is these, these companies, the collection of them are now in receivership. They're fully protected. Some of this, um, the terms of this include like anybody that has contracts with them to provide services is expected to still follow through with them. And, and here's another interesting piece. You're right, they're vacant. We are in a housing crisis. Fuck you guys. Put some, t- put some floors down, get the water running, yeah, put some people yeah, into these yeah, places. But yeah. you also have to think like they're in these rural communities. So did you know that they own, based on this article, 70% of the rental inventory in, this, in Timmins, Timmins, Ontario? Insane. Huge amount. It doesn't specify how much of it's operational and how much of it yeah. isn't. But I assure you that they're not paying their taxes because right now on this list, they owe the town of Timmins $793 thousand dollars in municipal taxes and like take a step back from that hamilton would need that money to run our that that would be an important budget line that's a lot of money now go to timmins what does seven hundred and ninety thousand dollars in municipal taxes being missed mean for that that just their operations that's like walmart saying uh you're a supplier to walmart walmart says hey we don't need you anymore you know how much that that would that would bankrupt bankrupt a company that was supplying Walmart. Like they owe Sault Ste. Marie $645,000. They owe Temiskaming Shores, which probably has one street light, $11,000 in municipal Bad taxes. Bad management. Bad management. Bad management. And you've taken somebody's house away. These are these aren't communities that have huge production. They don't have white collar mm-hmm. jobs. They're not in they're they're industry mm-hmm. towns mm-hmm. and these rentals are an important valuable yeah. part. Another interesting thing that I read in the article, and I'd love to know your thoughts because we started with stats, was because they own such an incredible share of various types of properties in these areas, they can't, they're not allowed to fire sale them. So you and I are, you and I are going, okay, like if my portfolio was doing poorly, I'd pick something that had good equity. Sell it. Sell it, get get the fuck out. I'd I'd have some liquid back in. Yeah, yeah. These townships are saying, you can't just sell the 900 pieces that you own in Timmins. Yeah. You'll fuck up our entire market. Oh, big time, big time. You'll, you'll, you'll devastate the, the real estate market and it'll take a nosedive because you flood the market with all these properties. And because they were purchasing these as corps, as individuals that had plans, the city had, they had no opportunity to say, please don't buy 70% of our rental inventory. That would be bad for us. This is all very under the radar because it's legal. Yeah. It's not wrong, but I, my girlfriend said it the best way. This is like a really great example of girl math. Like they sat down one day and they were like, if we have a hundred million and we spend 900 million, like just like to, we're, pull out your fucking calculator boys and not to add insult to injury, but the, the real estate gentlemen in this collection and everyone can Google what they want to, but it, it's not owned by one of these corps, so it's technically unrelated, but he had a pipe burst at his building across from Gage Park. Yeah, yeah. Three months he left those people yeah, with no yeah. water. What, yeah, I know. What the heck is that it's about? It's a piece of shit. He, he, was, he, was, he was hoping that they would leave yeah. and he can uh, renovate. But, but like this guy, it's bad management. You go on property, you, unless you've got the cash flow to carry it, like, like developers, they buy raw land. They know, you know, the cost, what it's going to cost them to carry it mm-hmm. for five, 10 years. And because they know they're going to make that money back down the road. This guy does not have that kind of cash flow to, to have empty properties, taxes and, and, and like heating and, and, and hydro. And they can't bankroll it. And no one's no. going to give them, no one from their investor circuit is going to give them any more money because they've pissed this away. Yeah. But it's also like there's a karma piece to this yeah. too, right? Like you've taken away affordable housing. You have fucked up the the cost assessment for these properties in these cities. You're obviously treating tenants in Hamilton like absolute shit. Yeah. But you know, if they had have just had a, a more grassroots even just a section of this. Do you know how much the cities will help them? If they said, we wanted to target, yeah, we want 10% yeah, of our portfolio yeah. to be low income. Yeah. You know, there's people sleeping in tents and yeah. we want to help with, they would have received financial aid from all the cities too. And they didn't because they were fucking money grubbing. You know what? From they, the start. They kept, every time they kept getting more money, they didn't reinvest that into any of the properties. They tried to buy more properties and they were thinking, and it was like a, it was like a pyramid scheme. Probably mm-hmm. they were running. They say, okay, we got another uh, five million dollars. Let's buy more properties, and let's use some of that money to hopefully carry us with the properties that we own. So I don't know. Like I like I. Well, this like, is. I don't think it was fraudulent from the start. I think no, it just no. got way too big. 
egg way too quickly. And and oh, for sure, he's probably thinking, look at this. We, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be billionaires. They're probably looking at this, and they thought they were, you know. But and the COVID market had so many, so so excuse me, so few opportunities for cheap. Like you didn't see a coupon, so when you did, it made you go, yeah. holy shit, yeah. I gotta go, right? So I can see the allure, but they've um this guy's done like like yeah. you think he can come back uh after it's all settled whatever bankruptcy whatever things happen you think he can restart another company you think people will listen to him I like mean, i mean he's got a lot of followers on instagram i think he bought them all i i, I you know I, I bet you there's you know what you know how you can tell uh on the uh likes if he doesn't have that many that means uh a lot of them are bought but i uh i went i went on his instagram and, and i and he he only allows it's you private now it is, it is yeah. private so he probably saw that i tried to uh, uh follow him he probably won't add me because he probably knows that but I, I was just curious i actually you know what guys like that okay to, for him to get to that level, he was pretty smart. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, I have to give him that. Yep. Uh, and and I, w I was more interested in finding out how this guy did this, but use morals in, in it, with it. And I just think he got caught up too deep into it and, uh, and he was just chasing a dream, not paying attention to what, uh, what, was going on and and he was just using money to keep buying not paying attention of managing and and maintaining what he had and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. like i mean to get to like he owes 144 million to mortgages who like just like you told me in taxes who knows how much taxes he owns on all the all these other properties but but to get to that level i have to give the guy credit you know between him and the people that he that he the other two guys that he had doing this with yeah. him like their their ability to collect funds is definitely like, admirable yeah like he's yeah exactly like but the the I, they posted the list of who they owe money to though right oh, so the 144 right? million is that this is just straight up mortgage funds yeah. that the bank is going to own yeah um and then they owe to like the companies you would expect so they owe money to city of brantford sudbury st Catharines, welland enbridge but here's where it gets like sad too they also owe money to jay does it all in Sault Ste. Marie. Oh, right. They owe Tony's Tile it. Oh, yeah. So they, they screwed a lot of contractors. They're fucking the little guy. Yeah. And, like this and, they, and, they, and they're, and they're going to get hurt big time. Well, and so yeah. when you asked, do I think that they'll continue in their current careers? I think that legally they shouldn't necessarily be allowed to give real estate advice, if one might argue. Yeah. But the better question is, like, who else gave the money? Because, like, this might be witness protection quality shit, yeah. right? Oh, like, I know. You I don't know. know who's paid them. Yeah, like, it's just, uh, I, I just, I just find it, incredible so we'll see i should i should check right now see if he's if, if he's, he's accepted me. If he doesn't if he doesn't accept me then he's he knows that i'm probably just uh, he must have such a stomach ache and but, i can i can sympathize with uh, that it's a shitty place to be yeah it, it, it is i'm sure it is i'm sure he realizes the mistakes he made but you know what for him to be at this le level today shit like this was happening like like a year and a half ago, like mm -hmm. he was going through some, oh, so yeah. like even maybe more than that, like two years ago that yep. things were going. So he was continuing hoping the market would turn, would turn for him. So what actually, so what did happen is the market took a nosedive. He thought it was going to continue. All and the if loans it, and, were more and, expensive. And, and if he did mm -hmm. 2% mortgages, markets hot 2021 2020 part the first qu f half of 2022 and then boom he got he got the door slammed on him yeah like his his third quarter report the optics on that would have been a, a race to he, the bathroom he could have yeah. unloaded he could have unloaded a lot of a lot of real estate uh, in 2021 and he would have been in like his investors would have been happy with him. Sure, except now he's unloading vacant property yeah. that he had previously bought that had some bankroll yeah. attached yeah. and in various states of repair. They started tearing these places apart. I know. It's like, know. that's the word. And this is why I say the risk piece, right? Like whether it's high level or low level, you... What doesn't matter what Warren Buffett says, there is still risk associated. Oh, Real estate sure. might be a great investment portfolio, but like you need to run the holy shits, which, you know, the stress test is a great example. Yeah. And people hate it. And it it doesn't it doesn't accurately portray what you make versus what you can right, spend. And right. people feel really judged by how the stress test is, but frankly at work. There's a well, lot of people it, in their houses because they ran a worst case scenario right and 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 if we didn't run that stress test i think we'd be in a lot worse situation 100 uh uh you know what i mean because people like when they were getting approved for two percent mortgage 
they were they had to qualify for a four percent mortgage or five in some cases. Yeah. I think. So yeah. so I think I think you know what like everybody didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Even realtors didn't like it. And uh, but I think uh, it worked. Yeah. Which yeah. also means there's an argument for the government as as everyone's anticipating they'll take our interest rates down. I think this is an opportunity behind some curtains to talk about making the stress test a little bit harder. Right. And they, they could stand strongly on that point because it fucking worked. People are still in their houses because they ran this eventuality. So, you know, in the U.S., they have millions of banks. Yes. Right. It's not like in Canada. It, it, like they've got millions of banks. So there was a mortgage broker that went to... Um, they went, they went to the U S they were in this elite group and everything. And he was the only Canadian and he calls me up and he goes, Rob, you're not going to believe this. There's like thousands of banks are going to be going bankrupt in the U S and they got to change the interest rates fast because it's, it's, it's going to creep up here slowly. Maybe the banks won't go bankrupt up here because, but, uh, just people like it just mm-hmm. uh, they got to change the uh, they they got to change the interest rates because down there it's in worse shape than it is up here and we've always sur- not survived but we always done better than the U.S. remember like th- there was the 2009 crash for uh, for uh, the U.S. when uh, when the market took a nosedive and everybody had a subprime mortgage which was you can get your mortgage at one or two percent but really, but after three years, it, it jumps up to six, six, six percent or whatever, or even eight percent because they were giving a mortgage well, that's less. That's like buying your furniture at the fucking brick, right? Like, right. Yeah. Uh, when when you actually have to pay for it, you realize, holy shit! Now I got to pay for this thing six months later, two years later, or whatever. But but they these people when they got their mortgages, they started with a small mortgage, but they had to make up all those that that three years of the difference and that's why their interest rates were higher than everybody else's Mm -hmm. we didn't have those those subprime mortgages where people um when when the three-year term was up that their interest rates went up not not because the interest rates went up because that was the interest rates the interest rate went up because they had to make up making up make up the difference Mm -hmm. somehow like that so now i don't know if i don't think the americans did that um, it just, they had to slow inflation, both the U S and Canada had to slow everything down because things were just getting out of hand. House prices were going up. Every, everything was just getting expensive. So I don't know. I think, uh, I think this guy here, I think he's got, uh, you know what? It's, it's not good to be in the paper knowing that, you know, that you, all these properties and, uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of the investors, they want to just break his legs. Well, and he's fucked. The investors are fucked. They don't care as much about them. If you had that kind of money to move around, you you, you knew the rest. I'd like to see the fallout in the communities. There are some Northern Canadian communities that will be affected by this and, and very basic trades people and and other folks that got pulled into it. You know, you, you know what? I'll tell you something like I, I'm, I like investing in my own stuff. I like, I like touch. I like to feel, I know I, what I've done, I handled it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I know giving money to somebody else, it, it is a risk, but look at the shit happens with this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy is in deep shit right now. And uh, I don't know. I even have very my very close friends. They'll say, hey, Rob, when you buy something, I'll go in with you. I go, no, no, because I don't want be I don't want to have it be that one investment that didn't turn out. Right. I'd rather I'd rather lose it on my own. Not, not lose it, but if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. You know what? I'll tell you. Uh, you could buy a piece of real estate right now and and it may not go up as much now but I'll tell you if you hang on on to it for 10 years you will m- make your money back and some like like you will do well on it you can't lose you just can't lose with real estate short term uh if there's you know like if you buy different depends on the property but i i won't i won't let my close friends um you know there's too many variables too i'd love to know if there's any refinances in here you know if they guaranteed right especially if they were collecting in 19 and 20 yeah what their refinances in 21 could look like guaranteed for them to get to this level Mm. these guys were were leveraging themselves like you would not believe guaranteed i could i could tell just by like you know what these guys were like you know they're they're they were trying to be big ballers in this in this game of real estate and 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 
they rolled over a lot of people, a lot of nice people, probably, especially the con like the small contractors that were, the plumbers, the electricians, all those guys that were probably doing work for them. Yeah. They all got screwed. And and you know what? And 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 those guys, they brought their own material, labor and everything else. And yeah, yeah if you're not paying the bill, you're not paying the receivables, you're not paying for the and let's be clear, like Timmons needs eight hundred thousand oh, dollars to keep God. the fucking streetlights going. But Rob, we've broken our rule. All What's we've that? talked about is real estate. Oh, yes, yes. Let's get on uh, okay, something else. Let's let's something get... else. Okay, so I went out for dinner this weekend. Mm. And I'm going to tell you that we used to go out every other weekend. And it's expensive. It is expensive and now. It's, it, it's not always good. Gotta get the, you got to get the entertainment book out. You know the coupons? Remember those old days? I got one for Christmas a few years ago. Do they still sell those? Yeah, but here's the thing. I, the first place I went to, Hutch's Fish and Chips, I had my coupon. Oh my this is like a childhood memory. And they were like, we've never seen that before. And huh. I think that it's just reached such a death that, it, it, that it's not <laughs> So no more coupons there. But so anyways, we used to go out every two weeks. And we stopped going out because what we realized was a lot of the stuff we can cook at home. Yeah, yeah. And we like the process of cooking and we like having yeah, our friends over. Yeah. So, you know, Scott was going out and if he was going to get a steak for dinner and pay a restaurant price for that and it was only okay. Mm -hmm. So all that to say, we go out like closer to quarterly now, which is yeah. crazy. that Because that makes it a big furry deal, right? Yeah, oh, big time. Big time. So we went, uh, we were informed that we were going out for dinner with exactly 24 hours notice. Okay. I asked where we were going for dinner and I was told that we didn't have a reservation. Okay. okay. That's a shit show. That's McDonald's, isn't that, it? Really? <laughs> we are six adults who want to go out on a Friday and night. No reservations. And the organizer has done butt kiss. So That's I it. managed to get us in to Bon Tomps, which is on John. It here here, here in, in Hamilton. It's just a little corner restaurant. Called bon, bon Tomps, like good times in okay, French. Okay. And fuck was it ever. Um, the was it food, good? So good. Ambiance, so good. Um, they had my very favorite wine from Rosewood Vineyards, which is like an orange blend with a rabbit on the front of it. We camped there for like two hours. Mm -hmm. But all that to say, I asked my friends if they had any questions for you. Oh, shit. And I pulled my immediate audience and I have got three ones that oh my God. I think oh they're my. pretty good. Oh, God. Okay. okay. So the first is business related. Okay. Have you ever done the, if I can't sell your house, I'll buy it? Yes. Have you ever had to buy anyone's house? Yes. I've Tell us. We want I to have, know. I have. So the way it works is that we, uh, I get in the, uh, I, I have the uh, homeowner uh, order an appraisal. He can pick any appraisal he wants. And uh, because it has to, it has to be unbiased opinion. Because if I go in and I say, here, I'll buy your house for this much. After it closed, and say, hey, I could have got more money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so the appraiser goes in. And I, I will buy the, uh, the house um, at 93% like of the appraisal value. Really? Yeah. Plus, there's commission on top of that, too. And uh, so, no, I have. So, I have bought, and I've, I've, I've bought a few condos, some detached homes. And, 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 but the thing is, the price that I pay, it's like trading your car in, right? I'm not paying, uh, I'm not going to pay them the retail value of, of the house. But the crazy thing is they realize once we do the guarantee, we, we, we put it up for sale, we end up selling 99% of them. Sure. So the ones, that, the ones that I end up buying are, is when the market changes. That's when I get I get stuck on. And people are stuck and they're stuck. And then, but I, and, and I'll get one. Like I, I remember this one, one, I bought a condo and uh, I got the appraisal. Everything worked out. I said, this is great. So when I took over, I put 20 grand into it. The market changed uh, when I uh, after I I did that, so I I barely broke even on that. So, really? Yeah, but no, I do buy them, and it's not a problem. Like, <clears throat> there's no, there's no, uh, there's there's no you know scrupulous things or anything like that. But and an appraisal has to be done, and uh, and it, and it's it's not a problem. Yeah. Interesting. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's good. Uh, it's uh, it's crazy though. Um, but I tell people. Price your house right. I won't have to buy it. Yeah. And normally when I do the guarantee, um, we end up pricing the house right and it ends up selling 99% of the time. Well, that's everyone's main goal, yeah. right? If they wanted to sell you the house for 93%, yeah. you could have skipped that whole yeah. fucking like appointment. If it, if the, let's say the house appraises at, let's say, let's let's make round figures uh, good, a uh, million dollars, right? Sure. So, and I feel like, you know what? It, 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 it There's no doubt about it. It's worth a million dollars. Um, and, and meanwhile, they were probably thinking it's, they wanted to list at 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Sure. I would probably give them uh, like 920, 930,000. 
plus commit like it, they ended up it, they would end up in the mid 800s yeah. i would end up owning that in the mid 800s so but it's 120 day closing so i got 120 days to sell that thing otherwise i close on it and if i don't close i mean if i don't sell it i end up buying it they can buy something firm no problem but it's uh it's very rare but i have bought some uh some properties there's anything no weird ever um there was one that came in at the last minute i was actually i wanted it too and i'm like i'm like geez i, I you know not that i'm i i want i don't i want to own real estate my job is not to buy their real estate but there was one that i said Shit, i can't believe it and then all of a sudden we get an offer at the end and i kind of was like thinking this would be a good investment property you know what i mean it was a good, it would have been a good rental down the yeah. road so but yeah i, do I always buy say it. that this is the worst job for a shopaholic like yeah you know when you were like 16 and you worked in the mall and you were like oh i'm all too close money. to the but now it's like i'm just looking at people's like houses and furniture yeah. oh all shit day, yeah so. i know you walk in you go Shit, that's a nice oh, couch where'd nice. you get that or like or <laughs> are Scott, you selling that Scott when you sell like, your house how big do you think that television is and would that fit in our house like <laughs> quit looking at other people's shit we yeah. have our own oh, yeah okay question number two all right is the widespread arm yeah symbolic of anything no well we propose perhaps you were giving everyone a warm hug yeah i wish from your yeah, I should. yeah yeah it's I, great it's great marketing it, 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 you know what i i did pick that up uh from another realtor in the u.s and i said okay i'm gonna try this now i'll tell you when it hit the streets when i started doing that marketing i was scared to death <laughs> because there are people gonna either like it mm -hmm. or hate it and I said, so I'm like, I rolled a dice on that, that pose. Like it was like, it was scary. Nobody, like I was being, I was being, I think it was a little bit cocky. I think, I don't know. Do you think it, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It, it's just different. I wanted to do a different pose than everybody else does their regular, uh, arms crossed um, tilt back re real estate shot. Yeah. Yep. Just tilt, like typical real estate shot, you know, like just a portrait. And I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to mix this up, you know, and it, and it takes, it does take a lot of guts to do that. Like what I've done that 20 years ago, I don't know if I would have done that 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, as, as you get older, you don't care what people think and say, like anybody can say, I mean, I, I do get people say, you know, some bad, ugly things to me. I said, Hey, thank you for, uh, you know, paying attention. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's well, like, you're on the bus and that's they're it. in the bus, I guess. I'm right? in the bus like on the bus. <laughs> but, and, and you know what? It, 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 I, I'm just a business person that's just trying to, uh, you know, get, you know, Innovate. make, 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 make a living just like anybody else, like any business out there, just like you, you're advertising out there. I see your stuff. And, uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. In the same vein as advertising. The last question was, what did the cameo in Spider-Man cost? You know what? Somebody did that. Uh, he's not, you've that's got not, the best fans no, ever. Oh my was, God. I don't know who did that. No, uh, who, who did that? Was it somebody? Not somebody on our team. Yeah, we we have somebody that there there is a golfy fan page, and they were uh, at one time they were trashing a lot of your realtors, and I said, guys, you can't do that. Please don't do that because they think it's me. I went and sent them all all caps like uh, baseball caps that says golfy team on it. No way. They're all happy in that, and then now everything's all all good. They don't trash anybody else, and they it's all positive. But uh, but the Spider Man, yeah, somebody did that completely on their own, surprised us with it. That's great PR. Yeah. Like, I like that. Oh, yeah. Like what does it say? Like, I see him everywhere or something? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love and that then, for you. Uh, oh, yeah. It's just like, uh, uh, I, I think Conrad, didn't he do uh, something at the Christmas party where, uh, remember, um, what's that family show that, uh, that uh, the guy's a realtor? and uh, Modern Family. Modern Family. Yes. And he's driving and he sees all these signs and he can't get, get away from it. So I don't know. If I, I, I missed that. Uh, but he did something in regards to Modern Family. Show. But it was you? It was me because they kept driving around seeing <laughs> all, my, all my signs. I was billboards. definitely watching it, but I was imbibed at that point. Yeah, so I can't yeah, say I remember yeah. it verbatim. But, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it, uh, it, it is crazy. People don't, people judge you based on, on a picture out there, they judge you. And, uh, and, and you know, what's great about social media and, and podcasts like this is you, they get a, a sense of who you are, just like who you are. Now, a lot of people, um, that know you closely know that, you know, you're witty and funny and everything else like that. But now the public out there in general, if they're watching this, they're going to say, Hey, I, I kind of like Can her little spunkiness angle. and like her, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, like, not a hundred percent of the people are going to like you, mm -hmm. but there are going to be people that are going to like you that relate to you. 
that relate to you, those people will call you, which is what you want, right? Like, um, but in the other people, I mean, it, uh, who knows? They, they, they weren't going to call you anyway, or that's they right. weren't going to sign at your table. Conrad asks at every class, like, what what sets you apart and what makes you different? And Scott and I always laugh. Like, our thing is that we're, we're just kind of normal. Yeah. We have no delusions of grandeur. We have no ego. But unfortunately, like, part of the business that we're in requires yeah. us to do things like put our faces on signs. But yeah. that when it comes down to it, we feel all the same stress and pressure and oh. pain. And we went through the same bullshit on Saturday at the bouncy castle that your family went to. And, and you're right. You don't get that from the side of the bus. No, or no, a billboard at no, all. no. We're almost out of time. We've got a couple more minutes. Did you watch the Grammys at all? No. I did, did I, you? by accident. I was I was hanging from a, a really crazy, uh, <laughs> a drunk, good a good party, drunken Saturday night. Oh what my was God. your What was your highlight? Um, it, there wasn't no, uh, no highlight, but I, I, I Jay Z, you know, obviously commented how you know messed up uh, mm -hmm. the Grammys are that you know they gave him the you know, and then uh, who else was? Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Taylor Swift. She won. I I, I missed it. I, I I fell asleep, but she won album of the year. I I, I kind of like her. She's a big marketer. She's yeah. smart. I I do like a lot of some a lot of people don't like her. They make they get you know they get uptight because she's at football games. Hey, she's there with her boyfriend. It's her personal if, if your husband was a football player, you'd be at every every I'd game. Be. So and like full disclosure, the, I, I can't watch it because I don't really listen to much of this music. Like yeah. I turn the radio on. I couldn't tell one girl from the other. No, I, Taylor Swift for sure. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. think that she's I, done. I would go see. Uh, you know what? If I if 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 I knew she was coming out on tour, I never I always miss it. Uh, but if I would go see her. I, go I, for I, the she's experience. got great music. She's got great. Like, like, I'll tell you, I, I know we're running out of time. Foreigner. You, you, you ever heard of Foreigner music? Yes, of course. OK, they're probably one of the best concerts to go to because every single one of their songs is a hit that the songwriter i'm telling you if you ever listen to foreigners top hits like they've got two hours of every song you would recognize well maybe not you because i'm a little older than you i think you'd but be just, surprised yeah. it's kind of like chicago like i always said i would love to go to a chicago concert yeah like you'd never be bored every song's but, a banger oh like and that's how foreigner is yeah yeah anyway. good for you Guys, thanks for listening. Catch you next week. Bye.